everyone. This is Dr. Nika Taloma and this is another video lecture on pathologic obstetrics, specifically on intrapartal complications. And today we are going to discuss about dystocia. So when we talk about dystocia, this is defined as difficult, prolonged, painful labor due to mechanical factors. So dystocia is otherwise known as dysfunctional labor. So dystocia, dysfunctional, and then we have dysfunctional labor. Now, what are these mechanical factors that are being um, identified? So we have here the four piece of labor. So here, when we talk about mechanical factors, there are three mechanical factors. And then another one will talk about the psychological factor. So what are the four P's? So number one, we have power. Two is passageway. Number three is passenger. So those are our mechanical factors. The fourth P is the psych. Okay, so ito yung tinatawag natin na four P's. Okay, psych means the um, psychological factor. So when we talk about the four P's class, we start off with power. So letter, first letter P is power. So we're going to talk about how the uterus contracts. So we have the following conditions. So we have precipitate labor, hypotonic labor, hypertonic labor, and prolonged labor. So that's the first key power. Next, we talk about passageway. So passageway meaning we're talking about the pelvis and the structures where the baby will pass through during normal spontaneous delivery. So we have cephalopelvic disproportion and fetopelvic disproportion, which we're going to um, differentiate in a while. Magkaiba pala yung cephalopelvic disproportion sa fetopelvic disproportion. Next is passenger. So here we're going to talk about malpresentation, if there are fetal anom anomalies, cord coil, and multiple pregnancy. So here we have uh, the fourth P, which is psych. This will talk about maternal anxiety and fear and the lack of preparation. So for mater maternal anxiety and fear, this will... Um, these are not mechanical factors, rather psychological factors ito, but we will see how it will affect the labor or how it will cause a difficult labor. Okay, so we have different abnormal labor patterns. And if you remember class, in, uh, in labor, we have a latent phase, an active phase, and a transition phase. So ang pinapakita natin dito are the abnormal labor patterns in the first two phases of um, part one of labor. So the latent phase, so we say it is a prolonged latent phase class. If uh, for a nulliparous woman, it will occur or it will ha they will have more than 20 hours na labor. Pag sinabi kasi natin latent phase, if maalala natin, um, this is having a cervical dilation of 0 to 3 uh, centimeters. So, pag nuli virus ka and more than 20 hours, nasa latent phase ka pa rin, that is considered already as abnormal. Pag multi-para, we consider a shorter time period kasi uh, this is not the first time na mga nganak si mother. So, we have greater than 14 hours. So, next, we have active phase abnormality. So, during the active phase, uh, makikita din natin yung iba't ibang phases. So, we have protracted active phase or protracted descent. So, pag sinabi natin protracted, bumagal. Like, for example, in a nulliparous patient, greater or less than 1.2 per centimeter per hour. So, dapat class, ang target natin for a nulliparous patient, every hour, mag-open dapat or mag-dilate ang cervix niya ng 1.2 centimeter. Also, for that of a multiparous patient, dapat mag-dilate siya ng greater than or equal to 1.5 cm per hour. Next is protracted descent. Pag narinig nyo yung salitang descent, meaning yung if the head is the fetal presenting part, dapat bumababa siya at a certain level at a certain hour. So ngayon class, pag sinabi natin protracted descent, mabagal din ang pagbaba niya. So for a nulliparous patient, we have less than 1 cm per hour. And for a multiparous patient, we have less than 2 cm per hour. We have prolonged deceleration phase. So for uh, nulliparous women, we have uh, greater than 3 hours ang deceleration niya. 
and the same time with multiparous women which is greater than one hour. So secondary arrest of dilation, we also have arrest of descent. Pag sinabi natin arrest of descent, nag-stop na siya. Pag sinabi arrest, nag-stop. So greater, greater than one hour, wala pang descent. So ang tawag natin dyan is arrest of descent. For a multiparous patient, greater than one hour, ganun din, na wala siyang descent, hindi bumababa ang head ng baby, then we call that arrest of descent. And we also have what we call failure of descent, which is uh, wherein no descent in the deceleration phase or second stage of labor is seen. So that's failure. Totally wala tayong nakita na descent. Okay? So these are abnormalities of labor patterns na kailangan at least maintindihan natin kung ano ang ibig sabihin. So first P that we're going to discuss is power and we will start with precipitous labor. When we say precipitous class, ibig sabihin mabilis. Okay, tingnan nyo class ang definition niya. Expulsion of fetus in less than 3 hours. Imagine, less than 3 hours lang siyang naglabor, lumabas na ang fetus. So, there is a problem in power. Ibig sabihin masyadong malakas ang contraction na labas agad ang baby. So, this precipitous labor class is associated with the different um, conditions. Abrupt siya placenta, na-discuss na natin yan. This is the premature separation of a normally implanted placenta. May conyong passage, it may lead to precipitous labor, and it is also associated with postpartum hemorrhage. Bakit kaya magbibleed ang nanay? Imagine class, less than 3 hours na nganak siya kaagad. What is the possibility? Pwede nagkaroon siya ng laceration. Nalacerate ang cervix niya or the vaginal mucosa. Nalacerate because of the very fast delivery of the baby. And because of this, it may also lead to low APGAR score. So, I, I hope you are familiar with the APGAR scoring. So, this is a system of um, assessing the status of the baby upon delivery. So, pwedeng mababa ang APGAR score niya. Ang, ang APGAR score should be 10. Yan ang highest na APGAR score. Okay, what is our management for a pre precipitous labor? So, what do we give for a patient na ang bilis na nanganak? So, we give them a beta-mimetic magnesium sulfate, and lateral decubitus. So, ito yung class, yung mga tinatawag natin, are, these, are, um, these drugs are also considered tocolytic. We can generalize that during a precipitous labor, the contractions are very strong. So, what are we going to do? We give them drugs to help decrease the strength of these contractions, therefore, preventing the occurrence of this precipitous labor. Pero, in fact, class, you cannot really prevent precipitous labor because sometimes we do not anticipate that it will happen. Although if meron siyang abrupt siya placenta, probably we can say that pwede magkaroon siya ng precipitous labor. But it is not the case all the time. Okay? So we cannot really prevent this. But what we can do is to help um, address the complications it may lead us to. Now, um, just a quick review about power. Okay? Alam ko na discuss na natin it OB ninyo when you were discussing uh, normal obstetrics. So just to give us a quick review on uterine contraction. So when we talk about uterine contraction, we identify the duration. So duration is from beginning of one contraction to the end of the same contraction. So one wave like this pertains to one contraction. So the beginning of one contraction to the end of the same contraction, we call that class your duration. Okay, review lang ito. Okay, that is duration. When we talk about frequency from the beginning of one contraction to the beginning of the next contraction. So itong portion na to describes frequency. So yan natin malalaman how does how how frequent or how often does a contraction occur? Does it occur every 5 minutes, every 10 minutes, or every 15 minutes? So how do we measure that? Again, from the beginning of one contraction to the beginning of the next contraction. This is one contraction. This is another contraction. Okay, that is frequency. Another we have is interval. This is the resting time between contractions. So, resting time. Kailan daw yung pahinga? Ano naman ang interval? Okay, from the end of one contraction. So, this is the end. And to the beginning of one contraction. Class, this is the interval. So, for example, there is a 5-minute interval between the contractions. Kunwari, example lang natin yan. Okay? So, that is interval. And when we talk about intensity, tinatanong natin gano'ng kalakas. 
What is the strength of the contractions? Is it only mild, mahina lang, moderate, or grabe na siya, severe na siya? So we check on this by uh, looking at the peak of the contraction. So from the base to the peak of the contraction, that is how we measure intensity. So these are the terms class that you have to understand. Kailangan maintindihan nyo to, dapat maawatan nyo. No, ano yung ibig sabihin na ti? Uterine contractions or what are the measures for contraction, for duration, frequency, interval, and intensity. Okay, now if you already know the definition of those terms class, we have here what we call a hypertonic contraction. So when we say hypertonic, there is increased muscle tone, malakas ang pagcontract niya. So they are frequent, cramp-like and poorly coordinated. So, ito a class, hypertonic, sobrang lakas niya. So, if it's malakas ang contraction, it will also produce pain. So, pag titingnan nyo class, hypertonic, on taas-taas ng mga contractions natin. Ang taas-taas, pero maiksi, and hindi coordinated properly. So, therefore, it is not productive, meaning, hindi niya napupush yung baby properly, pababa. Hypertonic yan. So, delikado ba itong hypertonic contractions? Yes. Another we have is hypotonic contractions. We have decreased muscle tone, more likely to occur if uterus is over-distended. Tignan nyo naman, class. Um, nasa 45 lang tayo, okay? As compared to the higher uh, hypertonic contractions. So, nasa 45 lang. Tapos, ang bagal. Okay? It's not occurring frequently. So, therefore, whether it's a hypertonic or hypotonic contractions, ang nangyari dito, class, ay hindi nagiging productive ang labor natin. Hindi niya na, hindi niya mailalabas si baby properly and on time. Okay? So, next letter P that we have is called the passageway. So, when we talk about passageway class, we are going to talk about anatomy, the anatomical structures where the babies will um, pass through. So, meron tayong tinatawag na CPD and FPD. When we say CPD, it stands for cephalo-pelvic disproportion. FPD, on the other hand, is feto-pelvic disproportion. So, when we talk about cephalo-pelvic disproportion, the problem is the pelvis. Maliit ang sipit-sipitan. So, the pelvic area is the problem. So, small siya. Now, this class is diagnosed during the first pregnancy. Halimbawa, yung mga babae na maliit talaga ang katawan, tapos yung hips nila maliliit din. Um, tendency is mayroon din tayong pro magiging problem doon sa sipit-sipitan na tinatawag or the pelvis. So, this class is an indication for CS delivery. Kasi kahit na, halimbawa, yung baby mo is small, Kahit maliit siya, eh kung maliit talaga yung labasan or sipit-sipitan, hindi siya makakalabas. Therefore, we do CS delivery or cesarean section. And in the next delivery class, contraindicated ang vaginal birth after cesarean section. Bibak na dinatawag. Vaginal birth after cesarean section. So, mahihirapan din siya dyan. So, hindi natin pwedeng gawin yan kasi nga ang problem natin is CPD or yung sipit-sipitan ni mother. Okay. Next, we have fetopelvic disproportion. Here, class, ang problem naman natin is the fetus. Malaki siya, macrosomic. Malaki ang baby. So, ang nanay, normal naman ang sipit-sipitan niya pero si baby sobrang laki. So, for example, kahit na second baby na niya, Normal delivery siya nung una kasi adequate ang pelvis niya. Eh, yung second baby niya is macrosomic or malaki. Therefore, isi-CS pa rin natin siya kasi malaki yung baby. Yan ang laki class compared dun sa isang baby. Parang grade 1 na siya. For a fetopelvic disproportion, if the succeeding pregnancy has a small fetuses or normal in size, pwede natin itry ang VBAC or vaginal birth after cesarean section. Okay, so I want you to remember that. Yun ang pagkakaiba ng CPD at FPD. Pag CPD, ano ang problem natin? Yung pelvis ni nanay. Pag FPD, si fetus. Kaya nga, ang, ang clue nyo dyan yung letter F class, si fetus. Pag malaki siya, ang problem, malaki yung fetus. Pag CPD, ang problem is yung pelvis. Now, in the next slides that we're, we have, we are going to add, um, we are going to discuss class CPD. Okay? Pero para ma-discuss natin ang CPD, kailangan muna natin matutunan ano ba ang clinical pelvimetry. How do we measure the pelvis? 
Okay, now I want you to understand the terms diagonal conjugate, obstetric conjugate, or true conjugate. Okay, these terms are very important. So class, itong picture na nandito, it shows us how to perform an IE or internal examination. So pag nag-internal examination tayo, ang gamit natin ay dalawang fingers. The pointing finger and the middle finger. Or the index finger and the middle finger. Okay, now... Here is the symphysis pubis. So, what we are going to measure. Kasi class, ito, nagme-measure siya. Eh. Titignan mo, minalagyan niya ng mark yung kamay niya. Here is the symphysis pubis. We're just going to uh, identify kung ano yung location niya. So, on this view, we have the symphysis pubis at this portion. It is the bone. And then, dito naman siya sa portion na to. And on this view, nandito ang symphysis pubis natin. Okay, that's the anatomy. Next, we have sacral promontory. Ano naman yung bone na to? Ano naman ang sacral promontory? So, this shows us the sacral bone. Dito natin siya makikita, okay? At this portion. So, remember class kanina, we have here the symphysis pubis. Now, we have the sacral promontory at this portion. Uh, on a side view, lateral view, dito yung symphysis pubis and dito yung sacral promontory. On this um, inferior view, we have here the symphysis pubis and the sacral promontory. So, I hope na intindihan natin class yung anatomical landmarks. Another landmark that we need to take note are the ischial tuberosities. Okay, itong portion na to. Class, um, have you ever tried na sumakay kayo sa isang sasakyan tapos puno siya? Kaya kailangan yung kandungin yung classmate nyo? Tapos nung kinandong nyo siya, eh, parang natusok kayo? ba diba? Sinasabi niya natin, eh, tusok naman, uh, super sharp naman ng puwet mo. Okay, actually, the bone that causes that or makes you feel that is the ischial tuberosities, okay? Prominent ischial tuberosities. So, ito yung location niya. Okay, those are our terms. Now, let's try to understand. How do we measure the diago diago diagonal conjugate? So, when we talk about diagonal conjugate class, ito yung nami-measure natin, diagonal conjugate, letter D. So, from... The symphysis pubis, we measure from the symphysis pubis to that of the sacral promontory. So, pag natouch mo na yung bone na matigas dito, class, that is the sacral promontory, and this is the symphysis pubis, ime-measure mo sa kamay mo. From this point, at saka kung saan siya mag -e end ime-measure mo siya, class, okay? I, I would like you to take time to try to understand this photo. So, here... This is the diagonal conjugate. This is the what we can measure in clinical pelvimetry. So, pag na-measure mo na, kuha ka ng ruler, measure mo ilang centimeters siya. Okay? So, what is normal? Gusto natin malaman, ano ba yung normal diagonal conjugate? Kasi, di ba, minimeasure natin from the inferior margin of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. Balikan natin. Okay, class. Ito yung letter S nito. Yan yung symphysis pubis. Meron siyang inferior margin, superior margin, and the middle margin. So, since nasa baba yung kamay mo, class, ang minimeasure natin is from the inferior man margin of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. Okay. Now, the diagonal conjugate, for it to be considered normal, it's, it should be greater than 12.5 centimeters. Doc, paano pag ang na-measure ko is 10 centimeters? Ibig sabihin yan, class, inadequate. May C. Maliit ang sipit-sipita ni mother. Pwede ba siyang mag-CPD? Yes. Okay. So, follow pelvic disproportion. Now, next is the obstetric conjugate letter O. Obstetric conjugate. Class, this is not, it cannot be measured clinically. You can only estimate it. So, how can you estimate that class? You are going to subtract 1.5 up to 2 centimeters from the diagonal conjugate. So, example, ang diagonal conjugate natin ay 12.5 centimeter. So, 12.5 centimeter minus 1.5 equals 11 centimeter. Ibig sabihin, that is the obstetric conjugate, 11 centimeters. For example naman, minus 2 tayo. So, that would mean 10.5. So, normal pa rin ba yung obstetric conjugate kung ganon? Yes. So, remember class, the only thing that you can measure here is the diagonal conjugate. You cannot measure the obstetric conjugate. Unless is the true conjugate. So, balikan natin yung picture kanina. When we talk about true conjugate class, we measure from the superior portion of the symphysis pubis up to the sacral promontory. We are going to measure from the superior margin of symphysis pubis to sacral promontory. And it should be greater than 11.5 
cm. The transverse diameter class is the widest distance across the pelvic brim. So ano naman ang measure ang, ang area natin dito? It, we are going to look at the ischial tuberosities. Titignan natin yung distance nun. In order for it to become adequate or normal, it should be greater than 13.5 centimeters. So here in this picture, oh, yan yung gusto kong ipakita class. This is this bone is the symphysis pubis. If we are going to measure from the inferior margin up to the sacral promontory, we have that as the diagonal conjugate. But if we're going to measure from the superior margin up to the sacral promontory, we call that your true conjugate. Ano yung nasa gitna? Ito yung obstetric conjugate na tinatawag natin. Remember, you subtract 1.5 or 2 centimeters to the diagonal conjugate, you will be able to get the obstetric conjugate. Okay, I hope clear ito sa ating class. Oh, this picture naman shows us the transverse diameter. So as we can see here, we measure from this point to this point sa ating ischial tuberosities. So that will measure our transverse diameter. When we talk about cephalopelvic disproportion class, we have the following terms to understand. When we say contracted pelvic inlet, ibig sabihin, if the diagonal conjugate is less than dapat ito, diagonal conjugate is less than 11.5 cm, we have a contracted pelvic inlet. Maliit ang sipit-sipitan. And then we have a contracted mid-pelvis, contracted mid-pelvis, if we have a prominent ischial spine, a convergent pelvic sidewall, and a narrow sacroiliac notch. So these are all anatomical terms class na dapat natin maintindihan kung saan sila located. Okay, contracted pelvic outlet if the diameter is less than 8 cm. And a narrow pelvis if the pubic arc is less than 90 degrees. Those are the things that... Uh, uh, we would like to take note on power and passageway. So, in this lecture video, we talk about dystocia and specifically on the mechanical factors on power and passageway. So, we'll have another lecture video to discuss the passenger and the psychological factors. Last this one, we will discuss the separate later on because it has maneuvers that we need to understand and learn as well.